Hey everybody, it's Mrs. Glidden. I'm here to share our new daily schedule. I will be posting this online and it will be available for you in Google Classroom on Monday at seven o'clock in the morning. You don't have to work on it at seven o'clock in the morning. That's just when it's coming out. I'm gonna walk you through the daily schedule and show you how it works so that if you have any questions, you can send me a message through Class Dojo, and I can help you with it before Monday. Here we go. So I'm going to switch screens now so that you can see my screen. Here is what the schedule looks like. This is the at-home learning schedule, Mrs. Glidden, third grade. Anything that is blue and underlined is a link to a web page. A direct link you can click on it and it will take you to the web page. Activities that are in stars or have a star in front of them are activities that need to be completed daily. That means every day you should be doing these activities. The rest is optional. That means you could do it if you want to and if you're bored at home you have extra time. I'm going to scroll up just a little bit here. The first box is the yellow box. This is for language arts. It says one and a half hours a day. That means that you should be spending about an hour and a half every day on language arts. We did two and a half hours every day in class, so you're getting a little bit of a break. As you can see here at the top, it says must do's. These are the items that must be done every day to keep your skills sharp. None of this is new to you, We've been doing it all year, so it's review and it's practice so that you don't lose all the things that you've learned so far this year. The first item is in Google Classroom. You can see here the Google Classroom icon. You'll find that on the Clever page. It's your daily writing prompt. Now a few of you, yay, have already started doing this. When you click on the blue link, you'll see a, a direct link to the daily journal writing. This is a chart that shows you what you should be writing about on each day. We'll give it a second to load. Oh, it always takes a few minutes. Here we go. So writing prompts for at-home learning. You must write at least five sentences, except on Tuesdays. We'll talk more about that in a minute. You may write more if you want. So let's take a look at it. On Mondays, it's Make Believe Monday. The first Monday will be Write a Fairy Tale from the Point of View of the Bad Guy. Ooh, that would be interesting. Tuesdays, it's Top 10 Tuesday Tuesday. Write a top 10 list of your favorite characters. Oh, that's why it doesn't have to be five sentences on Tuesday, because it's a list. On Wednesday, it's Words of Wisdom Wednesday. You pick a quote and write about what you think it means. Caleb did a great job on responding to this today. Thoughts Thursday. Write your thoughts about, for this one it says your favorite movie. And then Flashback Friday. Write about a time when you got into trouble for something. I don't know about you, but I can still remember those times. So that's the direct link to the writing prompt. You'll find this in Google Classroom. There's a copy of it there, and there's a blank writing page for you in your assignments. Let's go back to the schedule. The next activity is the Unit 4 Activity Calendar. Again, you're going to find this in Google Classroom. There's a direct link to the Activity Calendar, so if you click on these blue letters, it'll pop up. This should look pretty familiar to you guys. We've done this in class all year. This is for our language arts book, Comparing Points of View. So each day I will post in classroom, in our Google Classroom, an assignment for you from this activity calendar. It is there in Spanish and English for your parents if they need to see it in Spanish. This link is just the English version so that you can take a look at it and know what you're looking for before you start reading. Our book, Comparing Points of View, 
the one about Cinderella, I added that to your uh, benchmark assignment reading. If you go into benchmark and look at your assignments, it says unit four reading, and I added it to your book list. So you can look at this book digitally anytime you need to do the activity calendar. The next must do is achieve 3000. I would like to see you looking at one or even two articles every day. You know Achieve 3000 is at your reading level, so you should be able to read through it. If you can't, you can ask someone to help you. Then I would like you to do the before reading poll and the article, read the article and do the activity at the end. I'll be able to see your results. Remember, you can always refer to the article. And finally, and the last must do every day is 30 minutes of free choice reading. Read whatever you like um, at home. And I would love it if you would continue to post those class dojo reading logs for me. I'm so excited to see your videos. For those of you who haven't signed up yet, look through my messages and through our class story on class dojo to see how to get your portfolio set up so you can send me videos. Um, down here at the bottom, underneath 30 minutes of free choice reading, you'll see the word EPIC. This is a direct link to the EPIC website. You can go on, create a free account, and you'll be able to see thousands of books to read. The only thing is, EPIC shuts down at three o'clock in the afternoon. So you have to go on and do your reading before then if you want to use their books. Otherwise, you can always read books from home or from the Santa Maria Library if you can order the books or if you have something else. The code that I have created an EPIC account for is here. That's our class code, HMR4660. So you should be able to go on and join EPIC through our classroom. May dues. Well, there's a couple links here to Scholastic News and Scholastic Learning at Home, some other great reading resources. Let's talk about math. Math time. It should be one hour every day. In class, we spend about one and a half hours. So this is actually a little bit of a break for you guys. Must do's. Here's the Class Dojo icon. I'm gonna post every day on Class Dojo a multiplication problem and a division problem. And I want you to solve it on scratch paper or on a whiteboard and take a picture of it and send it to me on Class Dojo through your class, um, your, your uh, student portfolio. Also, down here we have stars. That means it needs to be done every day. Moby Max. I'd like you to spend 20 minutes in Moby Max math every day. So many of you are working on your assignments in Moby Max. I'm so excited. This is all review. There's no new material that I have assigned for you. So you should be able to go in and do the lessons and not have too much trouble with it. But Moby Max is fun to use and they help you out when you need help. 20 minutes every day on Moby Max. Then of course, still facts practice, 10 minutes every day. 10 minutes every day, um, however you want to uh, do your practice. You could go into Moby Max and work on fluency, but sometimes that's addition and subtraction facts. I need you working on the multiplication and division facts because we do need to memorize those. So if you can, um, get some flashcards, use an app on the phone, write them out, or use your um, practice cards if you have them at home with you. Down here in the orange section, we have mystery science. Oh, this is really cool. You guys are gonna love it. Um, 30 to 90 minutes a week. So that doesn't mean all in one day. That means in the whole week, it's gonna be 30 minutes or even up to 90 minutes. There's lessons here with um, blue letters. That means they're a direct link. The first is a mini lesson. That means it's only 15 to 30 minutes long. And it says, what is the most dangerous animal in the world? If you click on it, it'll take you to the Mystery Science website. And you can go in and do the lesson and watch the video. Pretty exciting stuff. In the um, purple box, 
these are some extra enrichment activities. 30 minutes a day. These are some really cool websites to go in. You can get a direct link to museums around the world um, and you can go in and actually do a virtual tour and see pictures from their museums. So these are just some cool things to check out. Good idea to go in and get a little bit of um, enrichment. You might be able to use some of those Achieve articles for this also. There's a link here um, for our Liberty Tech page. This has some really great websites. If you click on this link, it takes you directly to the tech part of Liberty's website. Ms. Rogato has posted a whole bunch of great educational websites on here, including National Geographic Kids. Um, oops, it won't load. <laughs> I think I have too many uh, tabs open, but it will load. I tried it earlier. So this is a Liberty website. Oh, here it is. Oh, and a typing guide. Hey, remember Typing Club? Um, down here at the bottom are links to PBS Kids, K-8 Fun Brain, Sesame Street, the San Diego Zoo, all kinds of awesome direct links to websites that you can go in and explore. On the pink or I'm not sure what color that is, kind of pinkish red part of our schedule, these are chores. You should be helping out at home. With everybody at home right now, the house is getting dirty faster. So help your parents out. Here's a list of things that you can do. Playtime, yay! Another yellow section down here. One to two hours a day with no electronics. Playing with toys, doing puzzles, playing with your little brother or sister, coloring, um, doing board games, whatever you like to do that's not on a screen. Remember, you're spending a lot of time in class on a computer. So you need to step away from that for a while every day. And then the last box is green and that's exercise. I have added on here a link to Go Noodle. This will take you, well, actually, I'm sorry, it's not a direct link to Go Noodle. I'll put it in there though. Um, and it's got my username and password. The only thing is when you open it up, you'll see our homeroom. Don't use our homeroom account. Click on the plus button and create your own class. You could call it, oh, I don't know, um, Adrian's class or hmm, Alex's class. And that will be where you go in and you can do your own exercise and create your own avatar. That way it won't affect our um, homeroom class website. Well, if you have any questions about this, you can always reach me through Class Dojo. So keep sending those messages. Make sure you get logged into Google Classroom. I look forward to hearing from you all.